if material reality is all that exists, then the concept of eliminative materialism doesn't exist. Welcome to Friday Fallacy. This week we're looking at the fallacy of proving too much. Proving too much is when an argument can be also used to prove something that is false or contradictory. That is, any argument that can be used to prove false or contradictory conclusions commits the fallacy of proving too much. This is not a sound way of arguing, as sound arguments can only establish true conclusions. If an argument can also be used to prove false or contradictory conclusions, it must have a flaw in its reasoning. Some examples of proving too much. The logic of Pascal's wager also proves we need to believe in an all-powerful demon. The problem with the ontological argument is that it means that a perfect island also exists. If freedom of expression means not having consequences, then this limits others' freedom of expression. If everything is part of God's plan, then it really doesn't matter what we do. Not all arguments that seem to lead to absurd conclusions are proving too much. The fallacy of proving too much usually means that an argument can be used to prove not just what the person advancing the argument wants, but also other unintended consequences. But this is only an indication of a fallacy if these unintended conclusions are false or contradictory and not just absurd. For example, presuppositionalists allege that a naturalistic worldview leads to the absurd conclusion that we cannot account for logic. But even if this was true, it would not refute naturalism, but rather it could also be just an argument that logic itself cannot be accounted for. Similarly, the argument that gay marriage should be banned because it would lead to legalising polyamory rests on the faulty assumption that polyamory is undesirable. There are several forms of proving too much. One form is an argument that leads to multiple contradictory conclusions. Pascal's wager is a good example of this. If it successfully proves that we should believe in the existence of a benevolent god, then we can use the same logic to prove that we should also believe in the existence of a sadistic god. In fact, almost any god can be justified with Pascal's wager, even gods that contradict the existence of other gods. Therefore, it's clear that the logic of Pascal's wager is flawed. Another form of proving too much is when an argument leads to a conclusion known to be false. Many classical paradoxes are like this. For example, Zeno's paradox of Achilles and the tortoise seems to show that Achilles can never overtake a tortoise. But it's obvious that this is false, so there must be an error in the reasoning somewhere. The fallacy of proving too much is not so much a single fallacy than a way of detecting other fallacies. By definition, a sound argument will always have a true conclusion, and so any argument that leads to a false conclusion or a contradiction cannot be sound. If its premises are true, then there must be a fallacy in the argument. That is, when an argument proves too much, we know that there is something wrong with it, but not what. And what is wrong with it is likely to be a more specific fallacy. In conclusion, proving too much is when an argument can be also be used to prove something that is false or contradictory. Until next time, keep your fallacies to yourself.